Hey guys, wanna hear a secret? Saturday, August 1st at 6 p.m. is the start of Family Takeover Weekend. That's right, kids are taking over, yeah! So although we won't be meeting at our regularly scheduled time, we will be teaming up Miss Nicole, Miss Lisa, and Miss Morgan for an awesome joint worship experience. Jam-packed with energized worship, fun games, and engaging teaching. We can't wait to see you then. Saturday, August 1st at 6 p.m. Family Takeover Weekend. Woo! I am so glad you came over here with me so we could do our declaration. Are you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. I declare I am special and extraordinary. I am not average. I have been custom made. I am one of a kind. Of all things God created, what he is most proud of is me. I am his masterpiece, his most prized possession. I will keep my head held high, high, knowing I am a child of the most high God, made in his very image. This is my declaration. That declaration. Oh my gosh, it just touches my heart so much. You are custom made. You are God's masterpiece. You know, we need to keep telling ourselves that every every day so welcome to champions club again my friends you know i was thinking about last week and some of the stuff that we did do you remember i had this bag and i closed my eyes and i tried to figure out what everything was remember i had mr shark i could tell he was a stuffed animal just because you can tell a stuffed animal you feel them they're soft i knew that was a stuffed animal i had other stuff too i had this fabulous bottle of water you know, you you reach into a bag, your eyes are closed, you know there's something in here. This is a bottle of liquid. It, it really feels like a bottle of water. So I said it was a bottle of water. And then a book. I had mine happened to be the Bible, which I love, but I knew it was a book because you just know what a book feels like. I don't know if you remember too, but I also had my favorite candy in the whole wide world, Reese's peanut butter cups. But you know. It's not here now. I need it. It's so good. So, you know, I just want to remind you guys, it's by faith that I was able to name these objects. Our faith in God is like the faith we used to find out what those items were. And we have faith, even though we can't see God, even though we can't see him, just like I couldn't see this stuff, but I knew what it was. I know that God is with me. I know that God is real. So I'm just excited to share more of that with you. And I thought maybe we would go over our equation again. And then I have an awesome song for you. So why don't we put our equation up and we're going to do it together. And we're also going to do the scripture together too. So I want you to talk along with me. Get ready. Here it goes. All right. Our first box. When I am sad. Say it along with me. When I am sad, you can even do a sad face. 
I have faith that God will help me. Say it along with me. I have faith that God will help me. That God will help me. Um, and then the next one, I am comfortable. Now look at that. Look at that comfortable face. Can you say I am comfortable and make a comfortable face? Oh, that's awesome. I love it. All right, everybody. Now remember, we're going to do our scripture together too. And I told you that this was one of the strongest scriptures for me when I came to know Jesus. So let's read it together. Get ready. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You did great. Oh, I love the scripture. And you know what? I even found a new song that is super exciting. So we could get up and we could dance together. And it's all about Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right, let's go dance. Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now you try. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now hop on your left foot. Now the right foot. Jesus and knowing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, you know, we're going to go to another room and we have a guest today. Guess what? Well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you who it is and you're going to be super surprised. And they're going to tell you a little bit about the video and then we're going to watch the video. Okay? So, we'll see you there. Hey everybody, it's Miss Renee. I am so glad to be here with you guys today and we have a great lesson. I heard all the great things that Miss Lisa was talking about, and we're just gonna continue. We have a great video today with our friend Douglas. He's going to talk about something super important. He's gonna talk about how we have to keep our minds with happy thoughts, or as he calls it, our noggins. And he's gonna tell us a little story about how he dealt with that. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about what you put in your noggin. Hey guys, it's me, Douglas, and um, I, I, I really like playing video games. Yeah, I, I've got a few games that I really like to play, a few favorites. And my mom and my dad, they've got some rules about the video games that I play, you know, which ones I can play and how long I can play them. The games that I'm allowed to play are rated E 
for everyone. I'm not allowed to play the games that are weighted T14 because I'm not a teenager and I'm not allowed to play the ones that are weighted M for mature because, well, I think I'm kind of mature for my age, but mature is supposed to be like just for adults and I'm not allowed to play those games. Well, my friend Brandon the other day, he invited me over to his house and he said he had this new game that he wanted to play and it turns out it was actually like a really old game, like really old. It used to belong to his dad when he was a kid and uh, it was a console game, kind of like an Xbox, but it was this old dusty black thing and I don't remember the name of it, but uh, he was looking through the cartridges to find the game that he liked the most and this game, this console, like you needed, you needed these big old cartridges. You didn't have like a CD or a DVD or even like a download or anything like that. You had these big cartridges, kind of like a Game Boy game, but way bigger. So he brought out this one and he's like, this one's my favorite. And so I looked at it, and I picked it up, and I was looking at it, and I couldn't find I couldn't find a waiting on it anywhere. It just had the name of the game, and it, it didn't say T or M or E, and I was looking for E because that's the one I can play. But uh, I thought, well, you know, maybe if it isn't uh, T or M, then that should be okay, right? No, it was uh, it was bad. This was not a game that I should have been playing. Cause see, okay, so it was like a fighting game, but it was really messy okay really 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 violent and bloody and uh, so okay so the game worked was like like you had um the one guy was over here and he was controlled by player one and he kind of has his fist up and he's like and then player two he controls the guy who's over here and he's also got his fists up and he's like and when you push the buttons then that makes them like punch 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 or like kick 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 and uh you 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 fight each other like you do karate at each other and uh well, it, w- it would have been okay if it was just, you know, like fighting or whatever, but it was, it was really, it was really bloody and really messy. And, and they, these two guys, man, they just beat the spaghetti out of each other, man. And it was so messy and so bad. I knew it was bad. It was way too violent for me to be playing, but, but I loved it. I loved it so much. I just, all I could think about was I got to play this game. I wanted to play this game. I kept wanting to go to Brandon's house so I could play. And every time we did go over there, we played. I'm just thinking about this game and thinking about this game all the time. All the time I was thinking about this game. And uh, I started getting better at it. But the more I got better at it, the worse it was. Because, well, the messier it gets. And, uh, like, you could push different sets of buttons. And you do different kinds of special attacks. And, you know, like, throw mega punches or super kicks. Or, like, hurling fireballs at each other even. And uh, I found out later after playing for a lot time that if you if you beat up the other guy really good and he never hits you then there's this announcer who's like finish him really loud like you can hear it in the game and then you push a button and uh, there's a couple there's there's a few different buttons you can push and uh, one of them you like punch the guy so hard that he like literally explodes and um well, there's other ones, but I, I won't go into the literal gory details of those because well, yeah, they're just messed up, man. It's bad stuff. And, and I, I knew, I knew it was bad, but I kept wanting to play and I kept playing. And, well, it got really, really bad one day. My mom and I were at the grocery store and uh, we were walking down the produce aisle. Produce is where like the fruits and the vegetables and the stuff are. And uh, up on the, the shelf, there was this like pyramid of watermelon and it started to fall down the pyramid right at me. And before I could even realize what was happening, you know, it startled me. And I, I, but I heard with my own voice, I yelled, finish him. And I punched my hand right inside that watermelon. I punched a big old hole in it and my hand was stuck inside the watermelon. And uh, my mom, she was pushing the cart and she looked down at me. And she was like, what did you just say? And, well, I, I had to tell her the truth. I had to tell her that, you know, I've been playing this game with Brandon, and it was it was all I could think about, and I, I punched the watermelon because that's what you do in the game. I got in quite a bit of trouble. And, you know, here's the thing is, is what you put in your brains is going to come out eventually. The Bible says that specifically, that, that what's inside of you is going to come out. And so we need to be filling our minds with good things, not bad things. We need to be filling our mind with Jesus. Yeah, we need to be thinking about Jesus and and thinking about what he would do and how he would live and how he did live. And we need to be reading the Bible and praying. And there are some good Christian videos that you can watch or or good Christian songs you can listen to. There's even some Christian games you can play. And and if we fill our minds with those things, then good things are going to come out, right? And you know, it's not just about not filling your brain with bad things. That's important. That's important to not put bad things in your head. But even stuff that's kind of, you know, like, meh, 
Oh, well, it's, it's kind of, it's not bad, but it's also not great. You know, that stuff, that stuff is okay. You can play video games. I've got some video games that aren't necessarily Christian video games, but they're not bad. But if all I did was play those games, you're not going to be able to have good stuff come out. You're just going to have game stuff come out. And that's why it's so important to fill our minds with Jesus. Because if we want to be followers of Jesus, if we want to be like him, if we want to shine our lights, if we want to change the world for the better, then we need to be filling our brains with good Good stuff, and that's really, really important that we put good stuff in because if you put bad stuff in, then bad stuff comes out, and if you put good stuff in, then good stuff comes out. Well, I, uh, I've i got to get ready for dinner. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm having mushy watermelon because I had to buy the watermelon with my allowance. But I hope that you will remember that if you put good things in your mind, then good things will come out. Bye, guys. Wow, wasn't that a great video with Douglas? I just love him so much. He's so amazing. And it was so great, those things that he shared with us. He talked about he went to his friend's house and he was playing that video game that made him fill his mind with some things that were not so good. And every time he put those things in his head, things came out of his mouth that weren't so good. Remember when he talked about beating somebody up like spaghetti? What? That's so silly. And then, oh my goodness, you remember this part? Let me show you something. Oh, goodness. oh, does this remind you of anything in the video? Remember when he was talking about after he was playing those video games with his friend, and then he went to the grocery store with his mom, and he said those words that he heard from the video game, the ones that went in his head, so they came out of his mouth. He said, finish them, and then he punched that watermelon. Oh my. But the important thing that Douglas told us, which was so amazing, was that we have to fill our heads, our noggins, with great things. So good things come out of our mouth. The thing that I remember him saying is that if we fill our minds with Jesus and keep Jesus here, all the good things will come right out of our mouth. And we can talk and share about Jesus with all our friends and our family. And when we do that, it helps us make the world a better place. So some of the things that we're gonna talk about too are some of the things that we can think about that sometimes make our minds not think so good and makes bad things come out of our mouth. And then we're gonna talk about some things that we can fill in our noggins that make our mouth say great things. So some of the things that sometimes make us feel, you know, sad could be when we aren't sharing, when someone's not sharing with us, like if we're playing a game or like, can I have a turn? Can I have a turn? And they say no. What about just darkness? When you're outside and it's pitch black, Sometimes that's not so happy either, and we can feel sad about that. Also, sometimes when we get hurt, we fall off of our bike, or we stub our toe on the chair, and sometimes we get a scrape on our knee, pain can really hurt. And one of the other things can, can really hurt is sometimes when our heart is broken, when our feelings get hard or something doesn't go our way, sometimes our heart hurts and that can make us feel really sad. So what are some things that we know that can fill our brains and our noggins with happiness so that good things can come out of our mouth? One of the things that I know, and I know Douglas talked about this too, was Jesus. You know, we think about our scripture, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. That reminds us that we, if we keep thoughts of Jesus here and here, then things are going to come out of our mouth that are happy. Also, we have to remember that God is always by our side and that he promises to love us forever. Something that I had today 
is helping me stay happy is my new friend. Would you guys like to meet her? Here she comes. Hi, Miss Lisa. Hi, Miss Renee. I'm just coming from a group of my other friends. I don't oh, know you know. good idea. I know. Maybe yeah. I should put mine on too since we have to be safe. Social right? distance. Yeah. There we go. Look, guys, look who I have. Do you want to hold her? I love to you talk to her, our friends? Look oh. at this precious baby. This is my new baby. Her name is River. And guess what? She makes me happy. She makes me keep good things in my head, and I pray and I thank God every day. I say, God, thank you so much for my new baby girl. And she is so happy and lovely. Well, guys, it was so good to be with you guys today. I thank you so much, and I just want you to remember that when you fill your head and your heart with great things, then the words of Jesus come right out of your mouth. See you later. It was so much fun spending time with you today. Now don't forget, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our videos. And we'll see you next time.